Psalms 104. Bless, make happy, the Lord. If you were to make happy, make happy the Lord. Make the Lord happy, then we'll be happy. O oh, my soul. O oh, Lord my God. <laughs> o oh, my soul, O oh, Lord my God. Thou art very great. God is so great that in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible records, God said, let there, and let there be, and let there be. God is so mighty powerful that, that the actions of his voice, the actions of who he is throughout the book of Exodus, and the power of his blood, that it cleanses every sin. God is very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Well, there's no honor in America. There's no honor throughout the world. But in glory, there are even angels right now in heaven that don't honor God. Majesty, the complete, absolute royalty of all royalty. Who covers thyself with light. Genesis 1. And let there be light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. John chapter 3, and men hate the light because their deeds, they don't want their deeds to be reproved. Men that love the light, they, they come to the Lord, they want to be, they want to show where there's fault, where there's sin. Thou covers thyself with light as a garment. That's Jesus Christ up on the mountain. Peter, James, and John, and Moses, and Elijah, his garment, white, blistering. Who stretches out the heaven. You mean it's not Big Bang? Who made that all? We're going to a new era of space exploration without giving God the credit. He ain't going to get far. Those rockets, no matter what you do, are not going to make heaven's door. Heaven's door is for man. And the door, Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Just in heaven like a curtain. The Aurora Borealis. You see pictures in Alaska and the northern places. And there's other places you'll see those, those heavenly lights. That's just the majesty of God, those colors, the, the, the reverence of a colorful God that we have. God is a great inventor of colors. You can go anywhere and see a sunset, a sunrise, and see the beauty of God. Who lave the beams of his chamber in the water. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. The pillar of cloud that traveled Israel through the wilderness. And I think it's Ezekiel where it describes that chariot of God with the wheels and the cherubim. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. God's a spirit. He can do that. God will fly right through the universe. Jesus Christ. Second advent. He flew through the universe when he was born in the manger. Who maketh his angels spirits. So angels are a spirit. Though they showed up in a, a, a man body, a body that looked like a man, never a woman, and never had wings, that's fairy tale, their spirit. Hebrews tells us that, that we may entertain angels unawares. I believe that holds forth today, too. His ministers. You call yourself a minister? Are you an angel? Jesus said we'll be like angels, but we're saints. Angels have the capability of falling. Not a saint of God. His ministers of flaming fire. The Bible speaks about God being a flame of fire. That fire that led Israel in the wilderness that by night. Who laid the foundations of the earth? You mean the Big Bang didn't do it? 
God bless America. He's not allowed in the schools. Darwin is. The theory of evolution which defies the Bible is allowed in the schools. God's not there. I came through the public school system, kindergarten all the way up. Even a year of college, associate's degree. Never once did I hear in a public school that God is the creator. Now, I went to seminary and got my doctor's degree in, in Bible and became Sally Hayward, D.D. Gee, I studied then that God is the creator. I studied Genesis and all the books. And yet there are religions out there. You find our, 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 our other sources of Genesis and uh, the Big Bang and, and religion. You find out many religions even reject the creation and go for our theistic evolution or evolution itself. I've done a study about it. I forget what I titled it, but go back, go and look for it. Religions have this, have left the idea of the creation of Genesis 1. Who laid the foundation of the earth? You know what the earth has? It has a foundation. And inside the earth is hell. That it should not be removed forever. Thou covers it with the deep, Genesis 1, as with a garment, and water stood above the mountain, Genesis 1, when we look above our head, we look at the solar system where we shoot space ships, astronautical men, into a place of where humans need an oxygen tank to breathe, we shoot them into the waters. The waters above our head. The waters stood above the mountain. It's not, it's not the Pacific Ocean. When do you ever see the Atlantic Ocean above a mountain? At thy rebuke, God's rebuke, they fled. At the voice of the thunder, they hastened away. Almost man, it looks like the, the end of the flood of Noah. When everything was ripped open, the skies open, the windows on heaven. They go up by the mountain. They go down by the valley. Unto a place which thou hast formed for them. You, you drive your little car or you go all the way to Arizona. Oh, look at the Grand Canyon and billions and billions and billions and billions of years and, and, and evolution made the Grand Canyon. No, God did. The Grand Canyon was made when all the waters of Noah's flood went where they went. That's why you can find all sorts of animal skeletons on mountains. When, they, when Genesis flood of Noah's time, the water was above the mountains. Verse 6. Verse 8, it's talking about Noah's flood. Waters returned back to the earth, the waters turned back to the clouds, and the waters returned back to heaven, above your head. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over. God said, no more will I drown the entire earth. Now, he didn't say all floods. He said, no more worldwide, earthwide, heavenly flood. Genesis 1, 1, Genesis 1, 2 was a universal flood. That was the sun, the moon, the stars, everything that was in, in the pre-Edemic earth. Noah's flood was the earth itself. As high as the eagle can fly, a little bit further than that, were the waters of Noah's flood. And God says, no more am I going to drown out the universe. No more am I going to drown out the earth. I'll have minor floods. <clears throat> major flood. Next time it's going to be fire. Next time it'll be fire. That they turn not again to cover the earth, the entire planet. So when they tell you that you know, global warming and you know the, the, the armpit of liberty is going to be all the way up to water, that's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. We're going to be all underwater. 
No, your brain is in water. You got water on the brain. The God says, nope, there'll be floods. There won't be an earth-wide flood anymore. Next time will be fire. You gotta read your Bible. He, God, sends the springs into the valley. How the water get in the valleys? How the little streams get in the valleys? How does rivers go? Because God said, which run among the hills. Water runs. It does. Is that water right here running? They, the waters, give drink to the beasts of the field. That'd be great, great evolution. Oh, we got gaps. We can't fill in the gaps. Oh, hey, here's the great hairless ape. He has a mouth. He has a stomach. Oops, forgot to create food. There's no room in man and beast to have gaps. God says, I'll make him have a stomach and I'll give him food to eat. And I'll have a way that he can digest the food he can eat and get rid of the food that he doesn't need no more. Evolution's a joke. Ha, 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 ha. And the wild asses quench the thirst. By how? God's water, God's rain, God's rivers. By them shall the fowls of heaven, Genesis 1, God made them, have their habitation, which sing among the branches. Why? Because God, God gives them water, God gives them branches, God gives them a place to be. God gave them the ability to, why do birds sing? Because God said, I want birds to sing. He, God, waters the hills with his chamber. And the earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy work. God waters the earth. God gives the earth water. And we have animals. We have vegetation. And we have fruit. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle. Cattle need grass. God says. That's you know in the, in the creation of Genesis 1. God made the, the plants first. Why? Because the animals will come up afterwards. When the animals come up, they gotta have something to eat. There's their food. Ah. And the herb for the service of man. Herbs are for men. That he, man, may bring forth food, uh, food out of the earth. Man was the first gardener. Man's first occupation was husbandry. Thou may free eat of any of the fruit and all the fruit but one. That's Genesis 1. You won't find that in a textbook in school. And wine, grapes, that make us glad the heart of man. He didn't say alcohol. He said wine. What is wine? Wine is grape juice before it becomes infirmity. Before it's been sitting too long. That's wine. And oil, olive, to make his face shine. The compression, to help. And bread, food, which strengthens man's heart. And then the, the oil, the olive oil, you can eat the olives too. Grapes, you don't have to make just wine. You can have raisins and you can have grapes. You can have jellies. It's funny, you know, you can put up grapes and make jelly, but it doesn't turn into alcohol. Jesus took water and made it wine. He didn't say anything about intoxication. A drunk would believe it's, it's intoxicated. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The trees are the Lord's. The cedars of Lebanon, which he had planted. God planted the cedars in Lebanon. When Genesis chapter 1. The birds came, Genesis chapter 1. The cattle came, Genesis chapter 1. The herbs came, Genesis chapter 1. The grass came, Genesis chapter 1. How the heck do you get life from a big ball of fire? 
Where did the water come from, from the big ball of fire? The earth exploded. And we got water. But only God can take hydrogen with explosive and oxygen with explosion and take those three molecules and put them together and make water that puts fire out. Only God can do that. You know what evolution can do? You can make a hairless ape sit there with a cordless uh, razor and wait for electricity to be invented. Where the birds make their nest. And we already read about the birds. In the tree. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. God made fir trees. Stork, there's your house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goat. Now we got animals that walk around with the cattle. And the rocks are for the conies. The only other place that shows up, Proverbs 30, verse 26 or something. I can't read my writing. I believe those are the rabbit kind of hairs or something. But they make their home, homes in a rock. That's a good place to make a home. Jesus said, the man that... that Hears me and does what my words do. It's like a man that builds his house upon the rock. He, God, Genesis 1.14, appointed the moon for season. Where did the moon come from? They believe, oh, the moon came out of the Pacific Ocean. And you're a lunatic. And you got a devil. I remember him teaching me that. The moon, the earth spun around and the out of the Pacific Ocean came the moon. You need to go get your brain checked. He appointed the moon for season. So what's the moon tell us? Summer, spring, fall, winter. The sun, that big ball of flame out there that people get half naked in front of, knoweth his going down. The sun knows when to go down. The sun doesn't go down in the west and about 30 seconds comes up and I just want to come early. No, nope. the sun don't do that. The sun don't go down in the west and pop itself back up. I just I don't want to go down. The sun don't do that. The sun's been doing what it's been doing since God created it. Coming up in the east and going down in the west. Has not failed yet. One day. Close to the seventh year of the tribulation period, that sun's going to fail. That moon's going to fail. The seventh year of the tribulation. I know that. The Bible says that. Guys say, oh, well, there's no prophets. I gotta, I can, I'm a prophet with the Bible. The sun and moon and stars won't shine at the seventh year of the tribulation. I, I am a prophet through the word of God. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. I'm a prophet with the Bible. Thou, God, make it darkness and it's night. Genesis 1 4. And the light was good, and he divided the night from the day, and he called the night darkness. Wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. God set a time for the beast in the field. When it gets dark, go out and do your killing. Go out and get your food. Go out and do your roaming. You know, a deer would not do good to roam around during the day they could, that the animals could see them. Go in the middle of the night where they can't see you. Young lions roar after their prayer, prey and seek their meat from people who love animals. No, 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 no. God. Doesn't God make a doesn't God make sickness and death and, and healing and life? And animals go after the weak one in, in the pack of the animal. And that weak one, if God causes sickness, God has made that animal in the pack that's weak. That's gonna be that's gonna be the lion's food. So when you try to save the animals, you may be going against what God wants. 
Maybe God doesn't want whales no more. I, I, I don't know the mind of God. Why are they washing up? God's telling them to. God and the devil, through God's permission, are in charge of death. God gives the lions their meat. The sun, oh, we look at the sun again, arises. They gather themselves together and lay them down in den. When the sun comes up, the animals say, okay, time for bed. Night and night. So you would be wise by the Bible to not go out in the middle of the night and walk around. Unless you want to be lion food. Man goes forth unto his work. Oh, there it is. Employee. And to his labor unto the evening. In Jewish time, that would be 6 p.m. That's evening. Oh, Lord. How manifold are thy works. How wonderful and great in this multiplication of your work. From the animals to the weather, to man, to food, to plant, to the moon, to the stars, to the sun, to the earth, to the hills, to the valleys, to the mountains, to the universe, everything in wisdom has thou made them all, God's wisdom. Proverbs speaks about that. The earth is full of thy riches. Gold, silver, brass, steel, iron, water, wheat, barley. So is his great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. That's the oceans, that's the Mediterranean Sea, that's the rivers, all kinds of... The Psalm 104 is... All the creation of God, Genesis 1, after Genesis 1. And they are still finding new species of animals today in 2020. They are remarkable to find. They're finding new kinds of frogs and new kinds of spiders and new kinds of fish. And there go the ships. Bye. There is that lot of lions, and that's the devil. Some say crocodiles and other nonsense. Whom thou hast made to play therein. God made the devil. You say, well, ships, you know, that's... What if God prophesying there of rocket ships in outer space going after the devil? Or also the devil is also that fifth cherubim which there is no reptiles, no amphibians representation. There is the lion, the king of the beasts, of the walking animals. There is man, mankind. There is the ox, the tame walking animals. There's the eagle, the flying animal. But there's no snake, no serpent, no reptile, no turtle. That's the devil's, that's Lucifer's domain. The Bible Revelation calls him the dragon. Which the Chinese people worship. And the Americans worship the Chinese in their product. Where's all our stuff come from? These ships are the wait, uh, wait all upon thee, God, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season, fish. Peter and the, and the disciples, I go fishing, okay. They fished all night, they didn't catch nothing. 
Jesus comes walking up says, on the right side of the ship, guys. Boom, there's all the fish. And they even numbered them. That thou, God, givest them their gather, fish, thou openest thy hand, and they are filled with good. It is God that gives you fish. It is God that gives you chicken. It is God that gives you tuna. It is God that gives you the blessing. And it's my job. I work hard for this paycheck. I think pretty soon you're going to see how hard you don't work for that paycheck. Because pretty soon you know what's going to happen. You don't need a paycheck pretty soon. Just receive the mark of the beast after the church is gone. Man may not buy or sell unless he received the mark. Then the devil will provide for you. Now all the merchandise, I forget what chapter that is in Revelation. Thou God, hidest thy face, they are troubled. God says, I don't want to look at you, you're in trouble. God, I don't want to hear you, you're in trouble. Jesus took a nap on the back of a ship and the storm came up. Thou takest away their breath. Genesis 2 said, God breathed into the man, he became a living soul. They die. Well, I was in the hospital and they brought me back to life. Then you didn't die. You don't die until you have no more breath, according to the Bible. Well, I didn't have any breath, and they gave me CPR. Then you didn't die. It says right there, you know what death is? You have no more breath. Life after death is either in heaven by Jesus Christ, or it's hell without Jesus. Read your Bible. And return to their dust. You decay. Your body decays. That's what God told Adam. After he was cursed for eating the fruit. Somebody read the book Genesis 1. And somebody read Genesis 1 and believed God and Moses. And we're not giving the author of this, this song. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, the Holy Spirit. And Proverbs speaks about the spirit being there. And they are created. Thou renewest the face of the earth. Now that could be the creation where God replenished the earth with Adam and Eve. Genesis 1 1, Genesis 1 2, the gap. That could be the gap. Or it could be the millennium when the whole entire earth is changed. It could be either or. But Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was. Let's see, Genesis 1 2. How does it say that again? I'll show you the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The earth was without form, without form. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, there's the Holy Spirit, moved upon the waters. Haven't we been talking about waters? Thou renewest the face of the earth. That's either the creation of the gap theory. Or that's the millennium when the Holy Spirit comes back and it's been gone for seven years. And the whole entire earth is changed at the second advent of Jesus Christ. Either or. Because the glory of the Lord shall endure forever. That's Jesus. And the Lord shall rejoice in his works. The creation. He looketh on the earth. And it trembleth. He touches the hills and there is smoke. That could be Genesis 1. That could be also the second advent. Because there are earthquakes. And fire and smoke. Where are we? Genesis 1 or, or Revelation 19? It could be either or. Or both. 
There's earthquakes and volcano action, verse 32. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. So what we're going to do when we get to glory, new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem, we're going to sing to the Lord. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. While I am living in this flesh, I'm going to sing to God. And saints live forever. This body may die, but you're after with the body and present with the Lord. My meditation of him shall be sweet, great, and wonderful. I will be glad in the Lord. Great. Wonderful. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. Take all the sinners out. I'm not a sinner. I'm a child of God washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what sins this flesh does after, before I die gets judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Turns into wood, hay, or stubble. And that's it. Turned to ashes. And then I come back to the earth. And then I get New Jerusalem. Jesus said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Somebody still has the charge of sin. It's not a Christian. Let the wicked be no more. Well, the wicked, who, who, who have I taught you who that wicked is? That's the Antichrist. And then wicked people. Bless thou the Lord, in case you didn't get it at the beginning. Oh, my soul, in case you didn't get it, verse 1. Praise ye the Republican Party, Donald Trump forever. Yay to the presidency in America. Get out of your modern Bible. Yeah, I guarantee they'll probably come up with the Bible pretty soon. And they'll change God over the Republican Party, and the evil, wick, wicked people will be the Democrat. I guarantee they'll come up with the, with the great Christian Republican Bible. And instead of New Jerusalem, we'll have America. And we'll all live on Capitol Hill. And the Democrats will go to hell. That's what the nonsense I hear today on Facebook and in Christians. Praise the Lord! You know what I've been giving honor today on Memorial Day? The people who have fought for the word of God, for the cross of Jesus, and for Jesus alone. I have mentioned names today that no one's ever thought of. You know what one of my statements was today on Memorial Day? You honor dead people. That's a sin. All right? Let me get a Memorial Day. I'll, I'll turn this to Memorial Day real quick message. Now, let me ask you one question. I put this on my Facebook. Do you think God honors anybody who has rejected Jesus Christ? People going to hell have no more name. They are nameless. You telling me that you're going to lift up a person that God won't lift up because they would not lift up Jesus Christ? You need to repent. You need to repent. You need to repent. It's all about God. God's given our freedom. God has given it all. God has put food on our plate. God has put money in our walls. God has given us liberty. God has given us a nation. God. I'll give the honor and glory to nothing but God. Right there. And then I'll honor those who love God and are saved and defended the word. Those are the ones that ones that I know that are saved and ones that stuck to the book. Plain and simple.